Hi, uh, so in this video, I'm going to take you through, uh, I mean, we're going to continue with uh, elasticity. And uh, in this video specifically, we will look at uh, the relationship between the revenue and uh, the elasticity. Okay, so just as uh, a brief to read that uh, revenue is simply the total amount of money received by a firm from the sale of a product. Which means that uh, if uh, the firm has sold uh, Q uh, units, it means that the revenue then, which we can denote by R, is equal to the price of a given commodity multiplied by the output sold. Or well, I mean multiplied by the units sold. So if I uh, say the price is a 10 per unit and uh, the firm has sold maybe say 9 units, it means that the revenue for the firm then is equal to uh, 90. Now, remember that this price will have units. If uh, the units, uh, say, if we are using quarter, it means that even revenue will be measured in quarter. So it means we're going to have 90 quarter as the total revenue for the firm. Now, what we want to see here is the relationship between this revenue and uh, the elasticity of demand. Let's take a look at this. Okay, so now this revenue, remember, we've said is found by multiplying the price times the quantity, which means that we're simply looking at the product price times the uh, unit sold. Now, because in a free market, uh, in a free market, quantity demanded must always equal quantity supplied if we are to maintain equilibrium. It means that total revenue of the firm will equal the total expenditure by the households which means that the revenue that is collected by the firm is equal to the expenditure that the households make in obtaining the units which are produced or sold by the firm. And as such, it means that the relationship then between elasticity and expenditure will be similar to the relationship between elasticity and revenue. So if we look at it from the consumer side, we will be looking at a relationship between expenditure and elasticity. And if we look at it from the firm's side, we will be looking at the relationship between revenue and elasticity. However, the outcome will be the same. If we analyze elastic and the revenue, it's a, the same results will be observed if you analyze uh, expenditure and uh, elasticity. Okay, so if revenue is, il I mean, if demand is elastic, remember we looked at five regions. So if demand is elastic, which can be perfect or imperfect, but as long as demand is elastic, a decrease in price will increase the total revenue. This is because uh, for any given price, the firm is able to sell more. And if price was to change, to reduce, it means that the firm is uh, likely to uh, sell less, but at, uh, I mean, sell more at a higher price. If price goes up, the firm will sell less at a higher price. But the end results will be that uh, if demand is elastic, I, a decrease in the price will increase the total revenue and an increase in price will reduce the total revenue. Okay, so now if demand is elastic, a decrease in price will increase total revenue. Now this is because if the price has reduced, remember according to the law of demand, the quantity demanded will increase. But this increase in quantity demanded will have a more impact than the decrease in price and therefore total revenue for the firm will increase because many will be able to buy these units. So even though a lesser price is received per unit, enough additional units are sold to more than compensate for the lower price. And as such, revenue tends to increase. The opposite is true that uh, if uh, the price increases, then total revenue will decrease. If demand, on the other hand, is inelastic, 
then a price decrease will reduce total revenue and the converse will be true this is because now that uh, remember that if demand is inelastic whatever happens even if price reduces people will tend to buy uh the units because um, uh demand will still have to be covered and therefore their needs will have to be covered with that it means that uh, even if price has reduced the same units are likely to be bought and as such you will notice that revenue will just decrease because the decrease in price is more compared to the uh, increase in the number of people who are uh, running to the commodity simply put the modest increase in ticket sales will not offset the decline in revenue per unit and the net result is total revenue will decline okay so let's uh, look at uh, the case of unit elastic if demand is unit elastic an increase or a decrease in price leaves total revenue unchanged the loss in revenue from a lower unit price is exactly offset by the gain in revenue from the accompanying increase in the sales or uh, conversely if there is a gain in revenue from a higher unit price, this will exactly be offset by the loss in revenue associated with the accompanying decline in the amount of uh, the out, out units demanded. Okay, so now let's look at uh, this from a graphical point of view. So remember that uh, up here we have uh, the uh, elastic region and down here we have the inelastic region. In the middle, we have the unit elastic and at the intercept here we have perfectly elastic and at the intercept here we have perfectly inelastic now with these regions if we have our demand our revenue function we will see that uh, when demand is elastic it means that the total revenue will be increasing up to the point where demand will be unit elastic total revenue will be maximum and when demand tends to be inelastic the total revenue will be reducing. So this is the relationship between demand, elasticity, and total revenue. Let me take you through the numerical examples. So look at uh, uh, the first column where we have uh, total quantities demanded per week as the, the price uh, per unit. When price is one, uh, I mean when price is eight, one unit is uh, demanded. And uh, when price it reduces to seven, two units are demanded and therefore the elasticity becomes five and you see that that is elastic. When uh, price drops to six, total, I mean, total quantity demanded increases to three and elasticity goes to 2.6, still elastic. When price is five, total quantity demanded is four and uh, elasticity is 1.57, still elastic. And when total when price is four units demanded becomes five and uh, elasticity becomes one which is unit elastic and beyond that elasticity re uh, coefficient reduces to the inelastic region. If we compare this with uh, the revenue, we see that uh, when uh, at the price of one, I mean at the price of eight with one unit uh, uh, sold the firm will generate 8,000 revenue. So remember this price is in thousand. So $8,000, I mean the units are in thousands. So it means that uh, the firm, okay. So uh, you look at this, you see that uh, the units are in thousand and therefore the firm will make $8,000. And uh, because uh, demand is elastic, a drop in price, associated with an increase in quantity demanded, we'll see an increase in total revenue to $14,000. And further, a further drop, will see revenue going up. A further drop to one, will see revenue going up all the way to 20. But because at the price of four, demand is uh, unit elastic, it means that uh, uh, total revenue will not change for that drop from five to four, and therefore total revenue will still be 20 because demand is inelastic and as we go to the inelastic region as price reduces down we will be seeing that the total revenue will also be dropping all the way to eight thousand because in this region we are in the inelastic region 
Therefore, simply put, when price when demand is elastic, a decrease in price will lead to an increase in total revenue. When demand is unit elastic, a decrease or increase in price will not affect total revenue. And uh, when demand is inelastic, the decrease in price will lead to a decrease in total revenue. When demand is elastic, there is an inverse relationship between price and total revenue. When demand is inelastic, there is a direct relationship between price and total revenue. Okay, so in summary, we have uh, this table where we are showing uh, the elasticity coefficient uh, sign as well as uh, the nature of uh, elasticity of the demand and the description. So we see that uh, when uh, the elasticity, elasticity coefficient is greater than 1, it means demand is elastic or relatively elastic. Now, quantity demanded changes by a larger percentage than does the price, and that that is uh, what elasticity is all about from this uh, part. And we see that uh, when price increases, total revenue will decrease, and when price decreases, total revenue will increase. When demand is a uh, unit elastic, uh, quantity demanded changes by the same percentage as uh, the price. And therefore, an increase in price will see a total revenue unchanged, and uh, a decrease in price will see total revenue unchanged. Finally, when demand is inelastic, it means that quantity demanded changes by a smaller percentage compared to the change in price, and therefore, an increase in price will increase total revenue, and a decrease in price will reduce total revenue. Let's now look at, uh, we've looked at uh, elasticity, but we have not discussed the determinants of elasticity. Let's now turn our focus to looking at the determinants of price elasticity of demand. The first one is the availability of uh, substitutes. The larger the number of substitute goods that are available on the market, the greater the price elasticity of demand. This is because if there are many substitutes out there and then the price of a given commodity increases, consumers will switch to the other alternative good and therefore it, may, it will mean that the demand uh, is highly elastic for a given commodity. So if consumers can easily switch to other commodities, then such a, commodi uh, such a commodity is elastic. We also have the proportion of income and other things equal here. The higher the price of a good relative to consumer's income, the greater the price elasticity of demand. So if prices are too high compared to what consumers are earning, then it means they, will, uh, they are likely to uh, switch to other commodities and therefore such a uh, product is elastic. We also have uh, the uh, comparison between the luxury goods as well as the necessities. So the more that a good is considered a luxury rather than a necessity, the greater is the price elasticity of demand. So recall that for a necessity, you will have to, to buy it regardless of uh, the price because you need it for you to continue with your life. Uh, but for a luxury, if it's too expensive, you are likely to hold on and abandon it for a while and then maybe buy it when you have enough resources. Therefore, luxury goods are more elastic and uh, necess necessities are inelastic. So we also have uh, time as a determinant. So product demand is more elastic the longer the period under consideration because consumers often need time to adjust to changes in prices. Now, if uh, you increase the price of mini meal today, for example, some consumers will definitely buy because they need the mini meal. But in the long run, consumers will switch to other substitutes where they can buy rice or maybe switch to cassava meal and so on. So the longer the time, the more elastic uh, is the demand for a given product. Finally, we also have the definition of a market. So you will notice that narrowly defined markets tend to have more elastic demand than broadly defined markets because it is easier to find close substitutes 
for narrowly defined goods. Okay, so thank you very much for watching. I'll see you in session four. Uh, if you have questions, please send an email to moawelias at gmail.com. Bye-bye.